Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Hello, gentlemen. <laughs> I really enjoyed this movie. It was oh, so good. fun. Good. I grew up with Indy, but it was always so scary for me. I was like, I can't take it. It's snakes. I can't do it. But, you know, I've, I've matured. You've matured. Right? And so I'm into it now, and I love it. There ha I, you have to be watching movies that are tougher than these. So. <sighs> no, <laughs> yes, definitely. Yes, okay, yes, good. yes, yes. Well, I wanted to start with you, James, and of course, Harrison, feel free to uh, pipe in. But, um, You've done a lot to kind of pay homage to the nostalgia of the old indies and really kind of, but still modernize India at the same time and not just through effects, but also through uh, diversity and inclusion and casting and storylines, plots, etc. Tell us about how the changes towards diversity and inclusion will uh, forward the franchise. Well, it's Indy arrives, when we arrive in the movie, it's 1969, and the world has changed. You know, the world that the first movies occur in is a kind of golden age Hollywood cinema that is in which Nazis bad, allies good, um, the, you know, the world of a college campus is a mostly white place, and the world of the, it's a kind of golden age of America um, in the sense of movies, the 30s and the 40s. It, it, it is impossible to not to bring the movie into the present, it, even the late 60s, without starting to address how the country is... It's not just a movie about how India is getting older, it's how the country is changing around him. And I think that that was a large part of what we were focused on. I mean, the Indiana Jones films always took you to faraway places and always mixed cultures and people, but the world is different in the late 60s. And I felt a real responsibility to kind of reflect that because I think that there's no way you could make a film that held together if you're pretending the 60s were the same as 1935. You know? Right. Well, you know, we still get that sense of adventure from Indy. And I always wonder, is he drawn to the adventure? Is it something that's innate in him? Or if given his druthers, he'd like... I'm done. I'm going to pass the mantle to someone new, and I'm going to go retire. Well, I think we mustn't remember, we mustn't forget that while they may look like adventures when they end up on, on, on screen, and they are adventures, they're also quest, a quest for knowledge, a quest for completion, a, a quest for... Um, uh, self-worth, um, a quest for rekindling uh, emotional energy and, and, and emotional uh, involvement with the world around him. He sunk into a bit of a, a hole, this character, and the fun of it is watching him come back up. So I, I think it's a, it was a brilliant, dramatic device, uh, and, I, and I'm, I just love that about the movie. But I wanted the movie to be about, I wanted the f five films, if I was going to do one more film, I wanted it to be a completion of his story. I wanted to see these things about him. I wanted to know that, that he made an effort to, get, to, to, to redress the mess he left behind him. Well, in general, just um, if thinking about just one sentence to kind of wrap everything up, what do you want this film to inspire in the next generation? Brilliant filmmakers. There we go. I love it. That's a good short one. <laughs> yeah, we do our best just to try to kind of put something intricate. These movies are really intricate clockwork mechanisms, and... and um, that there's a tremendous amount of work, not just by me and Harrison, but by, and not just the rest of the cast, but also the, the, there's an incredible amount of skilled artisans working on these pictures top to bottom that make this kind of fantasy and world tour and the reality of it come to life. Right. Well, I think it's done absolutely beautifully. Thank you, gentlemen, for taking Thank some Thank you time so to much. Appreciate it. And congrats on the film. I can't wait for more people to see it. Me so too. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be well. This is such a fun movie. Yeah. I saw it uh, just the other day, and it was IMAX huge screen. We had a blast. Oh, cool. Tell me, Ethan, what was one thing that you had to learn 
for the movie? Like, what's the wildest thing you had to do? Um, I think the wildest thing was to know how to pilot a plane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty big. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Harrison actually helped me. So I had pilot lesson for, from Harrison Ford, which is kind of amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and how about you, Phoebe? I had to learn a card trick, oh. um, which I've completely forgotten now. But I had to, yeah, I had to do a kind of like, I had to do about three card things, which mm -hmm. I can't even remember the in name the, of them now. Yeah, in the boat scene. Yeah, there was the pick a card one, and then there was the yeah. kind of, the, the, the waterfall, which is like... <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I thought it was CGI. Sorry. Oh, thank you. Ella <laughs> <laughs> did a good job. Yeah. That means it's, it's good. good. <laughs> <laughs> now, how familiar were you with the franchise up until now? I was pretty familiar with it in terms of just growing up when it was just always on at Christmas and it was always the film that, you know, the whole family would sit down and watch. Um, so, yeah, I knew it pretty well. Um, but it was amazing going back and rewatching it from a kind of we're going to make one of these point of view because mm -hmm. the craft of it and the scale of it and knowing what you're going to jump into um, kind of sh sh shone a new light on it all for me, yeah. Well, when you learned about the role of Helena, our little wombat, <laughs> <laughs> what was it about her that you saw yourself in? Um, she's morally ambiguous. <laughs> she's, I think, no, it's, it's escapism and fantasy, really. I loved the idea of playing a woman who was an adventurer and who was fearless. And yes, yeah, she's after cash. And yes, they, <laughs> they will do anything in their power to get yeah. their hands on it. But to have this kind of team, this like little nefarious team running around the, the world, nicking things for their own for their own kind of benefit. Yeah, Bonnie it felt and Clyde. good. Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> it felt good. A few less murders, but like there was a lot, there used to be a line in the film about that, which I'm sad we lost that. Well we actually do have a couple of, you know, lost lives. <laughs> in, not two. But, you know, just just but a we couple didn't of this quite time. murder anyone, did we? No, no, we didn't. Only Nazis. <laughs> Only Nazis. <laughs> so it's okay. And Ethan, I know you've been studying acting very seriously for quite a while, and this is kind of your first, like, huge role. Yeah. What was it like kind of stepping into Teddy's shoes and then working with our Helena here? Um, well, it was uh, kind of amazing. <laughs> I was always <laughs> excited on set, and um, um, I think Teddy, um, like, I pretty much identify to Teddy because he's a thief, um, no, I'm, I'm joking. Uh, um, no, because he is trying to be—he's trying to find his place between two adults, and he really admire uh, Helena, and, and I admire Phoebe Waller Bridge. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was pretty fun to shoot this movie, and I was excited all the time, mm -hmm. and we had so much fun. Well, was there anything that you learned about yourself through playing Teddy? Um, well, I think I didn't know that I could get so excited. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, I didn't know anyone could get that excited. You made everyone else get ten times more excited all the time. <laughs> Whenever Ethan was on set, we there, were like, <laughs> There wasn't a day where I wasn't excited. And it was eight, eight months long. <laughs> and for eight months, I was just like, whoa, this is happening. Whoa, I'm in an Indiana Jones movie. Oh, my gosh. I love it. Was it was all the energy that we, we like, fueled. The Wasn't it tiring? Was like, no. <laughs> it was the opposite. That's but how you stay We would get the note all the time from Jim that we had to stop smiling. He always had to tell us to stop smiling. Do you remember? He was like, yeah, you're, meant to be, you're meant to be scared. And we were always like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, remember. Well, thank you guys so much for taking time to talk with us today. Congrats thank on the you. film. It's so fun. And I can't thank wait for others to see it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hello. This movie is so fun. I grew up with Indiana Jones, and at first it was way too, like, scary for me. But, you know, as I got older, I'm like, I can take this a little bit more. So I wanted to start with you, Seanette. You are kind of in a very small club in that there have not been very many characters of color in mm -hmm. the and now we have you, and it's kind of during the 70s, and you have the bang and fro, <laughs> and it's kind of like a black exploitation vibe a yep, little bit. Yep. Did you kind of channel any Cleopatra Jones in your oh, preparation? Oh, yes, Foxy Brown Pangre was literally plastered on my mood board, and it's just like the perfect kind of like homage to, to, to black women and, and action uh, figures of that time, so I was so happy to step into it. I was glad that we went 
bigger and bigger with the fro because it kind of started off a little tapered, a little closer, <laughs> and then we're just like, you know what? If we're gonna make this statement, let, let's have a, a bigger fro and the leather jacket and all of it. Um, and I think it's a, a great way to to show kind of like the trajectory of Indiana Jones and to show the era that we're now in. And this is a beautiful representation of the 60s, the 70s. It really did come off beautifully. And you, of course, had several tete-a-tetes with our very own Kleber here, boy. <laughs> She's stunning on camera. In the, in oh, the film. of course. Yeah. Well, you know, it was funny. I knew instantly that you were bad news because of the haircut and that mustache. <laughs> Just yeah. the mustache by itself. And I was Those like, gross Ooh. teeth, yeah. Right? I was like, this is a little bit sus. This guy has something yeah. going on with him. Not going to get by me. Right? <laughs> well, tell me, was there anything else that you kind of physically put into your role to convey, like, I'm bad? <laughs> uh, other than the, yeah, the, you know, the, 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 there's something about the appearance that, you know, you have to lean into these, maybe call them cliches a little bit, but, um, you know, I just try to figure out, like, um, this guy is so devoted to, to, to Schmidt, a.k.a. Voller, and why is that? And I, I just don't think that really anyone else would have this guy, and, and, and just that's the only thing I could latch on to, uh, the character. <laughs> it's so sad. Yeah, it's so sad. It's so sad, and so and he's so dumb. So, um, <laughs> but he's capable in a weird way. <laughs> you know, yeah. like capable about all the wrong things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Maz, I want to mm-hmm. talk about you play a beautiful villain, and we love it. And everyone always talks about how um, you know playing a villain is fun, and you get to be bad, and that kind of thing. But I wonder, is there anything to the idea of kind of portraying that comeuppance that the villain eventually gets, kind of a uh, forgiveness thing? And is that something that you see in Voller? Is there an ability for forgiveness? Is there ability to understand, or is he just... Mm. Missing. <laughs> oh, it's lost. Tri- it's tricky, right? I mean, it's. I don't think he's lost, uh, but but obviously he has a vision of the future that we don't share, right? And I, I think it might be coming from a from an honest place, uh, but uh, I think he's hard. He's hard. He's hard man to forgive, right? But but if but we don't know for sure what he want to do when he get the thingy. We are not sure. And as we can only cross our fingers that it's the right thing. Mm. Well, you know, we deal a lot with time travel. And it's very interesting because we're kind of going back in order to move forward. And so we kind of infuse these new elements into the indie franchise while still kind of keeping the old ones nostalgic. Tell us, what was it about Voller that, that you were like, okay, this is a character that is different in this way. He's unique in this from this point of view? I think, you know, I mean, there, there's a certain sense of reality to the character, meaning that, that they had people in America and in the Soviet Union that was uh, old Nazis and scientists, and they brought them in, they closed their eyes and didn't look at, at the past. Uh, so he's part of that world. She knows that as well, and she has to live with that pact with the devil, right? Mm. And and. So, so, so they're real people in a sense. Um, he's, this guy, he's, he's very passionate about math, uh, and, and uh, he sees a bright future uh, if he gets his hands on the thing. And Shanette, I know you had a lot of fighting to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what was it like kind of doing that training to go, you know, tussle with some people? I mean, I think it was more of like a, a mental uh, com- combat that I was that I was having personally, and then also, you know, with, with Jim's help of of, of dealing with um, personalities like like the ones that that Mason has to deal with. Um, <laughs> but I, I, no, running around is actually pretty fun. I, I love um, enough a good f- pursuit, and I would appreciate if someone didn't step on my feet. But um, <laughs> other than that, it was, I'm all over the place. <laughs> other than that, it was pretty great. <laughs> and Boyd, if you had to give your character a piece of advice, knowing then what you know now, yeah. what would it be and would he take it? I'd say, man, if they've changed some laws in, in California, you should go out there and have a sit and have a chill. Have a, <laughs> Exactly, take, just chill Take a out. smoke break. <laughs> Hang out. Maybe uh, open your mind a little bit. Yeah, you know, that's not a bad idea. I love <laughs> it. Thank you so much for oh, taking time to talk it. with me today. The movie is an absolute joy. Congratulations. Thank, thank you. you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah.
Black Girl Nerds. Better shake your booties for Black Girl Nerds.